First of all, it's one prayer. It's, it's five days. It's one prayer, mainly to bring healing to, to others than, other than yourself. So I always tell people, it, it's one prayer, but you go five days. It's like a world renewal ceremony. World renewal, you can say that because you know, all different peoples, they have, they have devotional practices all over the world, but they all, there's always one that is preeminent, that is most important, which serves the purpose of, uh, of uh, like connecting heaven and earth. So the main thing about the Sundance is the presence of the sacred tree, the sacred tree, which is the, uh, in fact, the first day of the, the official first day of the Sundance is the procurement of that sacred tree. And there's a lot of different details about how to select that, how to procure it, how to obtain it. Song 11, Cutting the Sacred Pole, sung by Shiaka, is part of the, the tree ceremony in which they cut down the sacred pole. First, we send scouts out to look for the enemy. The tree is the enemy. And when the scouts find this enemy, the people are gathered. Then after that, we want to show that the enemy, the compassion and love we have. And that's when that tree is no longer our enemy, but now is our relative. It's going to help us for the next four days. You know, the, the roots connect, the roots of the tree connect humanity to all that is, all, all the past, everything that has transpired. And then the branches reach up into the heavens and connect us to all that is, all, all which is beyond, you know, infinite realms beyond this world. The First Amendment to the United States Constitution provides that, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Contrary to this rule of American freedom, the Commissioner of Indian Affairs, Hiram Price, wrote a set of rules in 1883 known as the Code of Indian Offenses. Its primary objective was cultural assimilation, an attempt to bring tribes to a white standard of culture and religious practice. This code made many traditional religious practices illegal. The persecution and assimilation policies included prohibiting the sun dance and sending Native American children to boarding schools. Part of the boarding school's mission was to convert children to Christianity, breaking ties to the traditional beliefs their parents held. Kill the Indian but save the man. That was that, that concept that was there. They, they beat it out of us, they'll do anything to get it out of us, even change our appearance, cut our hair, put different clothes on us. All of those things are very traumatic. We were at war, basically. You know, I what am I, three generations away from meeting the first white person? We didn't know up to that time, I didn't know. Didn't know that our way of life had been banned. If I participated in anything that looked remotely like the traditional religion or, or the music or, or anything like that, there was always police around. Police around. And, and where I came from, the Catholic Church was so powerful, so powerful that you were going straight to hell if, if they caught you doing something, you know, out of the ordinary. Even talking and speaking Lakota, that they, they really watched that close. In 1978, the American Indian Religious Freedom Act became law. This marked a permanent corrective change in federal policies. After the um, Indian Freedom Religion Act was passed in 1978, Especially since then, we started learning more of that history. But up until that point, myself, speaking for myself, I never knew a way of prayer that we had as Lakota existed. Because everybody in church wouldn't pray in Lakota. They would pray in English. But they would sing songs in Lakota. In her book, Teton Sioux Music, music ethnicologist Frances Densmore 
wrote of her study of the Sundance. The information shared with Densmore came from men who had participated in the Sundance prior to 1883. Densmore wrote, It is probable that no Indian ceremony has been misinterpreted so widely and so persistently as the Sundance. In the Sundance, the Indian considered that he offered to Wakantanka what was strongest in his nature and training, namely the ability to endure physical pain. A month before the Sundance, the Wakan, medicine man, prayed for fair weather, singing, burning sweet grass, and offering their pipes to the sky, the earth, and the cardinal points. The Sundance was held every year at the full moon of midsummer, and many traveled long distances to attend the ceremony. The statement of Chased by Bears concerning the Sundance was as follows. The Sundance is so sacred to us that we do not talk of it often. Before talking of holy things, we prepare ourselves by offerings. We talk to Wakatanka and are sure he hears us. And yet it is hard to explain what we believe about this. It is our general belief that after a man dies, his spirit is somewhere on this earth or in the sky. We do not know exactly where, but we are sure that his spirit still lives. Sometimes people have agreed together that if it were possible for spirits to speak to men, they would make themselves known to their friends after they died. But they never came to speak to us again, unless perhaps in our sleeping dreams. So it is with Wakatanka. We believe that he is everywhere, yet he is to us as the spirits of our friends, whose voices we cannot hear. Thank you.